from the VMware campus in Palo Alto, California. It's theCUBE, covering women transforming technology. I'm Lisa Martin with theCUBE and we are on the ground in Palo Alto at VMware for the third annual Women Transforming Technology event. Excited to be talking with Stephanie Zhou next, Vice President of Operations in the Networking and Security Business here at VMware. Hi yes. Stephanie. Hi. Thanks Thank you for, for joining us. Me today. Absolutely, our pleasure. So you've been in tech for a long time at VMware for about five years. Yes. Tell me yes. a little bit about your journey in tech. Was it what did you want to get into software and technology many years ago? So being actually a native of the Silicon Valley and being raised in this in California, my father worked for a high-tech company for 30 plus years. And so for me, it was natural to go into technology. Um, I'm very much of a finance person and numbers person, so it gave me the opportunity to take my desire for math and my desire for finance and be close to products and be close to innovation. So I would say yes, from early on, it was no question that I would be working in technology. And it's a great place to be in the Silicon Valley for that. It is, yeah. it really is. Yeah. So you were in finance for a long time. Yes. And then moved into operations. Yes, a couple How years ago. How did you ago. get that courage to go, yeah. you know what, I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. And you mentioned your dad you know, working in for 30 years. And yes. I think our parents' generation was, you get a job, you do the same thing for 30 or 40 In the years. same company. How, yes, <laughs> how did you get that courage internally yeah. to go, you know what, yeah. I, I want to try something different. Yeah, so. Being in finance, I had the opportunity to work in many different groups within the finance organization. And as I worked in finance, I got the opportunity to take a look at what was important to me and what was interesting to me. And I, although I love my numbers piece, I also was very much interested in process and operations and holding people accountable. And I got to a point, honestly, where I was in finance and I tried many different pieces of finance and I got to a point where, okay, what am I going to do next? Um, and there's also something that's been important to me is constantly rein reinvigorating myself and rebranding myself, not rebranding, but continuing my brand. And as part of that, operations was just the next natural piece. And I had thought about making that dive many different times in my finance career, but there was always either that risk of, oh, it's a little scary, or there was something else I still wanted to do within finance. And an opportunity came along a couple of years ago, and specifically in the networking and security space, in VMware, it is one of the highest priorities within the company. And because of the technology and because of the opportunity, I said, you know, now's the right time to go do this. Now's the right time to take that leap, take that chance. And at the same time, I also knew I had the backing of supporters and mentors to help me be successful in that move. Um, I knew it wasn't going to be a slam dunk. I've always told people, you always have to do that next thing that you know you're going to be able to contribute, yet at the same time, it's a little scary, and you have to have the confidence and the planning around that confidence to go for it um, and take that risk. And it's been worthwhile. It has been a nice change. It's given me new energy, and I think I, I know I'm contributing to the company. And that must feel good. Yes. Well, you, you talked about, uh, touched on a number of points that we've heard today uh, at the Women Transforming Technology yeah. event, where we, you know, things were kicked off this morning uh, with Layla Ali, who talked about having, finding that courage and yes. that confidence, um, but also needing to be, you mentioned, being around a, an organization, whether it's an organization or just a group, yeah. who support whatever change that you're thinking of making. Yeah. And I do think some change that's scary is yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think that's right. one of the hallmarks of women transforming technology yes. is this consortium of industry, nonprofits, academia coming together to, to confront head on the issues that the diversity issues that we're facing, not just right. as women um, in technologies and right. a lot of different gaps, but also providing that support right. and, and, and enabling women and men to, right. to have mentors to learn from. Yes. Uh, because it isn't just challenging to get women in tech, it's very challenging to retain women yes. in technology yes. who leave at very high rates for other careers. Mm, correct. So correct. how did you, at, at being at, at, you said Cisco for quite a long correct. time and now VMware five years, did you have women in leadership positions that you, that you looked up to that were right. mentors to you? I think 
So it's interesting, when you dive into your career at the very beginning, long time ago, you don't necessarily think about, okay, who are my mentors or who do I look up to? Or is there women specifically who can support me? I think for me it's become just natural. And I've had the opportunity where I've had a combination of both leaders, men and women, that have been mentors to me and supporters. And as I moved forward in my career, I discovered what was important was having even a diverse set of mentors, men and women, but a circle of women around me too that were living the challenges I was living. And I also don't think I realized some of the diversity challenges I was living until I got to a certain point and I looked back and went, wow, and I listened. And part of WT2 allows you to listen to some of the other challenges that other people are having and you realize, I'm not alone. And that person is experiencing the same thing that I'm experiencing. And I've now turned into a position where I'm like, how can I help you? How can I help that you live through the same things that um, I've lived through? How can I help you and help you contribute? And this is a form that allows us to come together and create new mentors to get away from the everyday busyness and be selfish for a day and think about myself and how can I improve on things, um, but really to connect um, and to share our stories. You so mentioned the, over that. the word accountability earlier too, and I think yeah. one of the things that's great about um, women transforming technology, women who code, we also, we go to uncover a lot of women events, women in data science, it's, at the, at the VMware level, VMware's a, a, a huge organization, very successful for many yes. years. But the, the, you know, the, this long-standing partnership with Stanford and the Clayman Institute yes. and now the new Innovation Lab, from an accountability perspective, you're starting to see it. Um, I shouldn't say starting, but you're seeing it in a big way. Yes. That's a big investment yeah, a big by investment. a big corporation with 20 plus thousand people yeah. and of course, Stanford University. Right. To look at what are these big barriers um, that are affecting, that affect everybody. That affect everybody. That and how can everybody. they start to uh, identify them and start to eradicate them? Right. And right. having companies participate and step up to be accountable to that yep. is huge. It's huge. And I think, you know, it's, it's a journey, right? And I think we all started a couple of years ago just looking at the facts and looking at the data and not pushing, but I think presenting the facts of this is what our own diversity metrics look like, not just men versus women, but you know, different, different you know, diversity factors. In addition to, okay, as a result of these facts, then what should we do as far as the next step? And I think over the past couple of years, there's been a natural progression around, we're gonna start looking at this, and we're gonna start asking questions, and we're gonna start holding people accountable to doing what they said they were going to do from a people perspective, diversity being one of them. And so it's been nice seeing that involvement. Exciting to me is the partnership between the VMware and Stanford, because I think it takes it to the next level of, it's not just the data, it's not just the facts, it's not just we know it's important, it's what are the underlying behaviors underneath it? What are the underlying actions that we now can take? Not just for VMware, not just for Stanford, but for the whole entire community, right? And that's what it's all about. It's about coming together as, a, you know, as multiple different companies coming together, as a great institution like Stanford coming together and saying, how can we make a difference? in the community that we live in and make a difference from a technology perspective. So yeah. it's exciting to me and I think it'll be interesting to be a part of the journey but also see where we are a year from now, two years from now. Right, right? so so you sounds like you've sort of found your voice with uh, wanting to be insp inspirational yeah. to other women, yeah. whatever stage of their career. That yeah. just seems like something that sort of occurred to you that hey, I've been through this I'm not the only one, a lot of people go through this. Um, what was that kind of aha moment like where you said, I have an opportunity here right. to give back? Yeah, I think it's interesting because I look back and I'm like, there wasn't, well maybe there were a couple of moments where I'm like, wait, wait, that comment you just made, that was because I was a woman, not because of what I was contributing. And either it was like, okay, that was an interesting comment, how do I handle it? 
But it really wasn't, I think, until I was up in the higher ranks, right? And I started saying, okay, I've done a lot. We've been very results in you know, oriented. How do I start giving back? And how do I start mentoring others? And it started out as mentoring others that way, maybe new college grads or maybe just new people to the company. And then as I started mentoring others, then I started realizing too that some of the women that I was mentoring, wait, they're living through the same things that I lived through. And there was a big time where I just thought, oh, it was just Stephanie, right? Oh, it's just unique to me. No, nobody else was dealing with this. Or it, I also went through a period of like, I wasn't any different than anybody else, right? And then as I started going through this, I realized, no, there's others that ha are living the same path that I lived. Um, and I think I can help them grow and contribute to their own growth. And by the way, at the same time, me learn from them, um, which is what it's all about. Very right? symbiotic. Yeah. yeah. But it, it takes events like this, like WT Square, yes. to identify, hey, there is, there's a lot of commonality yes. and challenges that we all face, yeah. regardless of, of gender or sexual orientation or whatnot. The more, the more you're aware of some of these challenges, yeah. the more we can identify how, how do we hold you know, organizations or whatnot accountable. accountable. It's, it takes that courage yes. though to come together yeah. and be the one to raise your hand yeah. thinking you might have a dumb question when yeah. of course there really are no dumb questions. <laughs> and finding that support, I mean, the, the strength in numbers, right? This is Makes what the uh, Golden the State Warriors. Warriors, exactly. <laughs> Who's the team I love. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's really true and it's, and it's, it's, and true. it's, a, you know, it's a very pervasive um, feeling when you come to an event like this, you walk in and you yes. feel yes. that there's this I inclusion. Yeah. You across. feel the power yeah. of the people in the audience, but you also feel the affirmation from the panels or, you know, Leila Ali, who is speaking today, and her struggles and her journey, um, and just saying, I can identify with that, right? I'm not alone, but also, how do we together come together and have a voice, right? How do we hold others accountable? Um, and doing it in a way that is fair, I think that's what all of us are asked for, is not, I never have asked for special treatment because I'm a woman or because I'm an Asian, but because it's fair, right? And I'm treated the way that my peers are treated. Um, and I think that's what, that's what we all want. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned Layla Ali, her keynote this morning was, it was great. Phenomenal. I think it's so, you, you can tell, even if I hadn't seen her speak, that yeah. you know Layla Ali is a very strong yes. woman, physically, yes. mentally, but it was really refreshing for her yes. to say, hey, there's moments where I gotta recheck. What's my purpose here? Yeah. What am I doing? My inside warrior. Yes. yes, and I love that she said, you know, we, we, we gotta find that inner warrior. She's in there. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> she's quiet. Yeah. Um, maybe has some tape across her mouth, but seeing a, a naturally, um, innately strong female mm -hmm. say, hey, sometimes I don't always feel that way. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important message to get yes. out to all of those people, regardless of, of gender or orientation, who don't have this sort of natural confidence that Alayla Ali has, right. that that's normal. Yeah, yeah. And for me, hearing somebody else say, you know, a couple of things she said, having that interior warrior or inside warrior who, okay, give yourself a day to feel bad. Give yourself a day to deal with it. And then it's time to go back for the fight. It's time to go focus on what's important to you and bring out that passion and go. And how many times have all of us felt that? Um, many a times. Um, the other part that for me, that really hit home for me was confidence. And it's funny because some people will say, oh, Steph, you have very high confidence. And I'm like, no, I don't. And she said something to confidence is in planning and being prepared. Yes. And as I think about that, that is something that is very true. It resonated very close to me. And I think about, as I talk to women and they, I say, okay, you're going to go into this meeting. Think about how you're going to prepare for that meeting. Cause then it allows you to immediately say, yep, this is what we should do. Yep, this is my idea, to be able to have that voice. Um, and so I would say for me, those were probably the two pieces, right? Confidence and preparation, or being prepared to have confidence. 
and then the Inside Warrior yeah. were just really hit home for me. The preparation thing I thought was really cool too because you know we talk a lot about imposter syndrome. Yeah. And it's a real issue that a lot of people face very true. whatever stage of career yeah. that they're at or industry. But she's right in that if you're prepared for whatever it is you're doing, yeah. that com their com that confidence will kind yeah. of come. But preparation is really yeah. key. Yeah. I chuckle a little bit because when you say the imposter piece, I, I will admit, I think there was a time in my career where I acted a certain way and I was in meetings in a, as a certain way or I went down a path because that's the path that you should go down, right? Um, but it wasn't true to myself. And so I think the part around being prepared, being confident as a result of being prepared, really allows you to be true to yourself and allows you to bring out the passion that's important. Um, and that applies to everybody. Not it just does. us. It does. Right. So in, in your kind of wrapping things up here, yeah. what are some of the cultural um, shifts that you've seen being in, in mm. tech industry for 20 years and some of the things that you're looking forward to in the next year at VMware? Yeah, so I will say cultural shifts just from the standpoint of awareness, right? I think that's a very important piece of people being respectful and aware of the environment that we're in and people having the conversations. I don't think we would even be having these conversations 10 years ago. And there's multiple different reasons for that, whether it be results of showing with inclusion and with diversity, you have better business results. Um, or whether it be people speaking up and saying, hey, we have a right to have a voice, we have a right to be treated in a certain way. And so from a culture standpoint, that voice and that awareness has then led to being able to have the conversation of how people should be treated, how they should be respected, and how we um, should even have the discussion with each other, right? Um, looking forward, I look forward to the fact of being able to have a stronger voice. And when I say a stronger voice, I don't mean, hey, let's go for the fight and let's make sure we've got the right numbers, but it really is the voice in the room. Um, I think we still have the discussion around the numbers. We haven't necessarily had the discussion of how do we make sure that the people in the room that is a diverse set of people, that their voices come out so we get a diverse set of, of suggestions and ideas to come to the best outcome. Stephanie, thank you so much for stopping thank by the Cube and, and sharing your backstory and your history. And um, it's really nice to, to hear from other mentors who recognize and are proud to be in that thank position. You. So thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching the Cube. Lisa Martin on the ground at VMware for the third annual Women Transforming Technology. Thanks for watching.